Okay, let's see if I can try to get this done in one take. I'm working on the notes for sanctuary today. What I wanted to share with this drawing is try to imagine that these are flows of data that represent sort of sentiment running through a physical place, like a city. And if we were able to turn on and off layers, try to imagine like a jacuzzi. Um, you know, if you get in the jacuzzi and you can see the water in the middle, and the, the flow from the jets are happening. The reason why I like that example is because we can control the, the jets, you know, unlike sort of studying natural currents, that's a good study as well. Um, but in the case of like a jacuzzi, you can like sit in front of one of the, one of the jets and actually watch how the streams change. You know what I'm saying? So um, try to imagine that a drawing like this represents like maybe a city center, and this might be a major um, freeway um, running through uh, a physical place. And you might be able to put um, what's happening with likes in a certain people group or in a certain neighborhood. There's, all, there's lots of different ways of visualizing data and what data streams we choose to turn on or off will affect what this image looks like. So in terms of dance stuff, um, you know, you will start to recognize patterns, healthy patterns of a physical place and unhealthy ones. You know, you'll, you'll be able to see that, wow, typically, you know, if you were looking at, at uh, traffic reports, that's a real common thing. You know, you can see that, um, you know, there's, there's congestion here, um, and so then you know how to redirect. So it's really, it's, this kind of technology exists in different applications. It's just kind of putting them together to study social change. Um, so in terms of the, the movement, the mind-body connection with the physical place, there are things that we could develop. And here I'm just um, messing around with this particular drawing. Um, but I'm like, you would have this idea here so you see how the lines move and you might have ideas that come around you know, that represent the flavor, the local flavor of the place and they, they would become cultural patterns because as we start to work you know, and these things are dynamic. Like this, this would be the kind of visual we're going to use on the Ava report. So when we come into a neighborhood, that that visual that we're looking at there is going to be moving, and we'll be able to turn on and off layers to sort of see. Okay, wow, you know, we're seeing not just traffic conge um, congestion in this area, but we're we're seeing um, cultural conflict as an example. So let's say we've got some rival, you know, street folks street gangs or whatever, um, having a particular conflict, and we can study that stuff and say, oh wow, you know, there's some economic factors happening here, we need to deploy, you know, a, a stir pot here, here, and here, and, we'll, and there's a train line that goes through here, which would connect those things, and we could do a destination education here, here, and here, and then watch this thing moving, you know, and we can communicate with Sanctuary and Pinups Presidential on this is what's going to happen to our, again, this is that, in this particular drawing. Are they giving birth to something like this? Hmm. But that's how each system, I'm doing the mirror version. This is what represents health, and you'll see that that looks like a healthy um, organism, a, a place connected to its people, connected to sentiment, and then if something would impact that, like um, you know, a major weather event, tornado, or hurricane, and you would see how that 
could react. And then you'd be like, okay, you know, we know how to go from this series of healthy pods where we've been sustaining life out into, you know, a disaster relief situation where these lines would just redraw. They would just pull out and say, okay, we had an impact. This number of people need to move this direction. That's going to remove congestion. That will make sure that we don't over um, tax the resources in a particular pod. Because well, this is all digital. That's the amazing thing, right? So it's not about conflict anymore. It's about just like, boom, something hits that healthy organism, and we deploy in, in these other ways. So this is just a beautiful way to sort of communicate, you know, and we can use graphics to support the initiatives that we're working on. So I talked about data systems, I talked about sentiment, physical place. Um, like when I was walking through Los Angeles, I actually spent some time on the river um, uh, in Compton, South Central area. Um, and there are some, um, I think, beautiful opportunities. So I don't know um, the, the folks in, in those government groups, so I'm just going to use it as a general example, but you could take, um, you could take um, an initiative like that. I mean, there, and, and that, it's not just the LA. I mean, I went from city to city to city throughout the United States where we had just gouged the land. And when that happens, a guy down at the bayou was explaining to me that, um, you know, when you cut channels right through natural water systems, that's what causes um, some of the erosion problems. So when you start to think about what gives life, which is our litmus test, right? What produces life, life and death are a cycle, destruction is you know, contrary to life. So when we're looking to make wayfinding decisions, because they're usually, you know, it's complicated status. You know, there are moral and ethical absolutes. You know, it's wrong to lie. It's good to tell the truth. Um, you know, it's, it's good to do that. It's bad to do that. And we all have sort of this laundry list of, of things that are good and bad, but when you actually get into a situation and you're like, wow, you know, I've got um, these opposing truths that are sort of forming this situation and how do we make the best decisions possible, um, knowing that if we just keep moving in that general direction, we might have to divert a little bit here, but then we would keep coming back to those, um, those truths so that we create this ever growing spiral of of change, right? So we can't like, you know, go for the jugular and talk about racism before um, we start to talk about what produces life, not destruction, what produces life. And it's not um, ignoring the fact that we have social problems. It's just that by focusing on the problems, we're not generating new solutions. So if we were to take a project like, and I'm inventing this project, but like, um, you know, that less than aesthetically beautiful LA River, and, and, and look at it on a map, and you see that, um, you know, it runs through all of these different ethnic neighborhoods. It runs through different people groups. And if there were initiative, an initiative that, that was based on pods, so there are standards, the need for clothing, shelter, healthcare, sanitation, all of us, and we have this thing that's running through our city that isn't beautiful, that isn't really producing life, and it could be. I mean, there's all sorts of opportunities if you have ways of, of capturing and holding water, especially in, in drought-stricken California. Again, I don't know what the details are in terms of the engineering of that particular project. I'm using it as an example. But you could take something that ties an entire city together and segment it via sustainable living pods ecosystems and say, this pods ecosystem has a Mesa influence. This pods ecosystem has a Korean influence. This pods ecosystem has, you know, Chinese American or, or whatever people group we're talking about. 
and there are obviously you know real mashups in those neighborhoods. But a project like that could then via these standard pods, the, the, the human things that we all share, we could start to say, okay, you know, we, we would love to have safe places, we would love to have clean air, clean water, we would love to have a beautiful environment, we could do sound design, we could do, um, you know, again, um, sanctuary and or perhaps presidential um, shows as a part of this sort of initiative to say, hey, we can make this thing really beautiful. And then this graphic, this data graphic, um, could be a wayfinding system. And I've, I've talked about that in the post, but I think the visual makes a lot of difference in terms of how we understand it. Um, you know, if I were to go, come up to this map and, you know, interact with it in some way, it could light up all the stir pods that are along that flow. Um, I, I, I would start to recognize this. It's going to be a new kind of, I'm calling it a new kind of literacy because it's not just sort of this, you know, a lot of this uh, thinking, because I'm coming from um, a seeker perspective, a lot of my thinking when I was thinking about um, eternity and ethics and all of these things, infinity, I'm coming from spiritual teachings because I vagabond through lots of different um, philosophical and, and spiritual texts. Um, this thinking has been around thousands and thousands of years that we're all connected, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of times we poo-poo that as if it's like, you know, kumbaya, um, hippie stuff, but it's absolutely correct. We are connected not only in our physical places, but we're also connected in the timeline and impacts that happen in, you know, the sentiment of a data system or a place do have effects. We are connected and we're going to be able to see that visually. So it's a lot less argument. It's, you know, it's not about, you know, talking about sort of rigid systems of right and wrong, conservative or liberal, you know, red, blue, Republican, Democrat, you know, those kind of sort of boxy, um, you know, thought patterns don't actually reflect what looks like an organic, healthy living system. And I know I happen to be out in the, in the woods right now, so I'm spending a lot of time, you know, looking at plants. I'm not a gardener, I don't have a green thumb at all, but um, there's nothing out there that remotely looks blocky, that, that goes in a straight line, you know, and I've posted, you know, another diagram about, you know, all of these plants where they're kind of reaching for the light that they want, or this way they're reaching for the nourishment that they're getting from the soil, and the environmental factors like wind, um, water, the slope that they're on affect how they grow. But that is healthy. That is what a healthy living organism looks like. And the plants that I'm going to see in Southern California, again, water is an issue. And, and our places do affect our choices, you know, where we go and we're walking around with a water bottle because it's really hot here. And um, it, it seems like it's a minor thing, but it's actually quite huge. And when you go to different um, uh, uh, microclimates, even within California, but across the country, um, you can see the plant life, how it's behaving in different ways. And that's what we need. So it's not being inconsistent at all. It's just saying we recognize that there are certain things that we share, reaching for the light, reaching for nutrition, healthy living organisms are reaching for life, not destruction. We have systems that will show us visually now also, um, with sound and you know in other in other ways numerically if, if that's the way you like to uh, receive information but there will be very quick ways that will bypass you know sort of language barriers um, because we'll simply be able to look at a graphic like that and go oh I understand where I need 
the stay tonight of I am like some guest or I understand what a project uh, concierge is or the, you know, her hospitality um, center is. So the neighborhood concierge is right here. You know, I'll know exactly where I'm going. I'll know exactly based on my unique PD that graphic can also change depending on, oh, I recognize who you are and you're this is Ava, and here you are, and boom, that graphic could, could modify according to me as I approach it because it knows that I've got um, nutrition restrictions or that I'm, you know, looking for a certain kind of place based upon my preferences. So now I'm engaging with my environment in a very, very personalized way, and fact that I've entered into this new neighborhood that may not be my own. I'm going to get information on the local flavor, on neighborhood modesty standards, on whatever um, information that that neighborhood kind of wants to share with guests that might be passing through it. Oh, this is a destination entertainment. Did you know that you could do this, this, and this? It's not like we don't have all of these apps. It's sort of um, bits and pieces, but pulling it together and being able to study it together as a community, look for places where we might be getting chugged up in terms of sentiment, not just you know, traffic. Um, because ultimately, as we think, so we shall be, and we can look at sentiment data and see how it's impacting our physical places. Um, so, so yeah, right. Um, my, my particular perspective is, is coming from this idea that we're all connected, but in terms of data systems, in terms of um, economic systems, in terms of um, all, all different kinds of systems, um, that is glaringly apparent now thanks to technology. And that is the big part of the platform. Physical place, talked about LA River, any kind of thoroughfare that goes through a city. It could be a train line, it could be um, A waterway, um, and again, people who do um, infrastructure and land planning and um, those kind of folks look at maps like this all the time in terms of the physical place. What we need to do then is just start to connect the sentiment data that we have in our, our, our technology, and that's what we're asking for. This is what we're talking about when we say, I want digital citizenship because marketers do have aggregate data, we just don't have it as citizens, and that's what we're asking for. It's not that this information isn't already out there, number one, and it's not that they're not already aggregating it in order to sell us stuff, you know? So if a big box retailer comes into, um, you know, into an area, they're, they're, they've got formulas. So like if it's a Best Buy or a Target, any big box thing, um, when they go into a new area, they study maps and they look at the physical place along with the demographic data in an area. So they have very, very precise formulas. They know that if they open and they make an investment in, in a particular new box, that they've got the information that will support, they've got the people that will support that business. We're just asking for that same thing as citizens. We should be able to look at the information ourselves so that we can start to make choices, be global citizens, connect with one another, look for affinity groups, look for opportunities that might, if you were just looking on paper, like many people were reacting originally to my Penup's presidential thing, they're like, she's insane. And I'm like, actually, no, I'm not. You know, people groups have, you know, the sort of geisha girl or Penup or uh, burlesque dancers. I mean, every culture, when you start to go from people group to people group, there are example after example after example of, you know, dancing girls. So you take something that we share versus something that we don't share and say, we could take a format like that and use it for social media viral videos. Um, and it would accommodate different cultural belief systems. So, you know, some of our groups are going to be wearing veils. 
some of the, our groups are going to be wearing string bikinis, and that's okay. That's the point. And when you connect it with stir, and you connect it with the fashion and the local pattern, then suddenly we're having this cultural adventure um, via repeating, repeating, repeating what we share versus what we don't share. And when we do that, then I can suddenly get on a train or any you know something that goes through a physical place, some kind of a connector that goes through a physical place. And I can say, okay, instead of you know letting some of these kids drop out in these um, challenged neighborhoods, if we could just set up a destination education series along a train line, then they could go on a destination education engineering, for example. Compton has um, uh, trains running through it. Um, you could do something where you take a thematic thing which is kind of old school. It's got, um, um, you know, sort of a legacy. But to talk about making these connections and use something kind of old school like gangster rap and say, we could do something in destination engineering using this train and go from here to the various, you know, you know, where you work. And kids could get on that train and every stop, they would be having a different but similar so it's not like they're they're going to be disoriented, and that's a good user interface for most things. Just like we'd be able to get on the train and go to a destination engineering for trains, a destination engineering for planes, a destination for small aviation, a destination engineering for X Y Z. Um, so it does at first blush seem like wow, how do all these things connect together? But they do connect together because that's the way we are, and this is what living look like far more than grid systems and most most of our systems you know we've all watched you know the office space and we've all stood in line at the DMV thinking God, this moment looks ridiculous and yes the answer is absolutely yes it's getting better cultivating culture covered that yeah so the big message is that there are nice people it, throughout the, I saw them everywhere I went. Lots of nonprofits, lots of people who are really interested in doing the work that they're doing that spend most of their time fundraising. And public servants do that. We see that in politics. That's what causes um, a lot of the, the problems with lobbyists and stuff. And our play in the AVA campaign on lobbyists is that we're going to go through these neighborhoods and find people who are working on social lab experiments. They're the new lobbyists, right? We are the new lobbyists. We are the ones who are going to influence how government, how governance gets done. Because we, with our belief ID as global citizens, are going to say, hey, you know, there are this many of us that want to connect along a train line, or this many of us that want to connect along a river, or this many of us that want to connect in whatever way, and when we connect together, we have a common purpose, and we can sort of you know, cross those cultural divides via the things we share, then you're going to start to see issues like racism start to go by the wayside, not because we've been focusing on racism, but because we've been focusing on economic development opportunity, we've been focusing on cuisine, we've been focusing on fashion, or we've been focusing on performance, or, you know, um, that's how things start to transform, and that's how those healthy living systems start to, start to flourish. So we have nice people in all of these neighborhoods, we just need to empower them, and Doing governance together can be fun, engaging, and entertaining. So no, I'm not crazy. Yes, you can expect that, you know, your president might look like this. Let's get prepared for that. Why do we want our politicians, why do we accept that all politicians lie? Like, who, who said? Who said we have to accept that? Who says that we have to accept lobbyists and corruption and you know, poor banking practices that brought our economies, our world economy, to its knees. Who says? I'd say no. So let's do this. Let's 
do our Ava in residence. Let's get out there and start working on social lab projects and start letting our best practices trend, not just our best practices, but our best thought leaders, so that by the time we get through this campaign trail, and we use that campaign trail every four years, that's why we're not wasting money on political campaigns. We're saying, you know what, we're gonna do a campaign trail redesign, one of the things we're going to do is public venues where we can gather and do Canucks Presidential Sanctuary. Canucks Presidential will change the next election cycle. We'll have a different creative theme. But this is all about, you know, we can do it. Let's get to work. Um, and um, spend money on something that we can reuse. That way we can go through the trail again every four years and take the polls and say, how are we doing? And look at our graphics and look at our data systems and say, you know, We've got these people who are making a difference. And so that's the second way that's really the lobbyist um, thing. So doing governance together can be fun, entertaining, and engaging. Why not? Why not? Why can't we use entertaining as a format for educating? On the Ava platform, um, we are be rock to tears is one of our hashtags, um, which means that we're going to tear the messages. But we need to know in the sea, again, the sea of information. Again, this is this is a very simple graphic. If you were to try and look at everything, you would just go, and we, and we normally do. And so what we end up doing, we get information overload, and we look at, at kitten videos, um, you know, instead of being able to see engaging content about the stuff that's really affecting our lives. So, you know, the more that we have these social apps connecting and trends of best practices rise up, the leadership will rise up, we'll automatically have our cabinet by the time we finish the first round of the, of the trail, then you're going to be able to tier messaging to make sure that the smartest people in science and the smartest people in technology and the smartest people in um, you know, design infrastructure, the smartest people in healthcare are, are the people who are leading us and helping us make decisions. And so we can go and there will be these trended um, you know, social videos that are designed by these experts. So even though it may just be the top level for somebody like me, because I'm not a scientist, um, um, not a biologist, for example, like I said, kind of merging the, the sciences here with the data systems design stuff, but and the experimentations and social apps. But um, uh, I'm not, let's say, uh, an expert genetics, we need to talk about genetic rights, that's absolutely a thing. Um, th those people will be saying, okay, here's the deeper level of information for our small audience, here's how we're going to simplify that, and then make just that sort of the, the simple mem that matters um, when it comes to you know, election time, so that I, as a, an average citizen, I'm going to have my area of flow or specialization um, I'm going to be able to have a, a have a cheat sheet, something that you know better than those things that we get at the election time that are just sort of um, you know, these blurbs and you don't know who wrote them. You know, whereas if we have stuff that trends and we're like these these are the top ten issues, there's no arguing about that. These are the top ten issues that citizens at the national level care about. Here are the top ten issues that our neighborhood cares about. And here, here are the quick vignettes. And people could sit down and watch 10 two-minute videos. And also, people will watch for a longer amount of time if it directly affects, you know, if I, if I see, you know, an explanation that's a five, I don't know, I realize I, I run really long on these things. But this is, this is kind of my sanctuary talk, so I'm working it out, too, design thinking. Um, people will watch longer content if it's relevant to them. Um, so we'll see the rise of digital storytelling, journalism, um, someone had mentioned also um, you know, indie films, any kind of storytelling, digital storytelling and journalism. That is going to, is going to be something that we're going to foster and we're going to nurture and we're going to curate um, because they are the folks that are going to put the lens on our world so that we can understand more and make good decisions about what matters. I think there's another point about addressing conflict. Okay, cool, great. Um, so yeah, I got my pinup thing up. So 
He's dancing with a T square. <laughs> All right, peace out. Let's do this. Woo. Have a good week.